With the recent influx of news regarding the new memorial edition of the Golden Age arc as well as the latest manga release, it really started to influence and inspire me to revisit some of my old notes and insights on why I valued this manga so much in terms of my state of existence. And though I do not like to be specifically devoted to a certain singular ideal, I believe that at this stage in my life it seems extremely fitting and valuable. And that is what we will be focusing on today, as I run through the concept of ignorance and happiness, and why I believe Guts and other characters' outlook on their personal agencies throughout the manga are crucial to the audience. Now, through self-exploration and also the appreciated engagements in human relationships, I've come to this conclusion that happiness can exist in many forms, each unique to its own propagation and destruction. And although some are inherently easier to obtain due to subconscious upbringing and social conditioning, other forms require more of a meditative perspective in order to achieve. Ignorant bliss is one of these most common forms of happiness. It's healthiest and most stable and what I would like to also call some sort of unrealistic optimism at times. Now, when someone says ignorance is bliss, they genuinely mean it. It is to ignore and forget about the things negative in our lives, truly a way to reach the pinnacle of happiness, essentially to be satisfied, to be satisfied with everything that you have. And in a way, this correlates to this appreciative attitude towards life, which is personally a, a healthy practice. However, the downfall of this mentality is an ignorance to life problems. To tackle challenges and obstacles, happiness should not be prevalent. When someone who is ignorant, life's difficulties become nothing, for things to throw away and ignore, which is completely destructive if you have an individualistic purpose in life. If you don't, well, then fair enough. If you just want to be happy, go for it. But personally, I don't believe a life without purpose is a life at all. And in the manga of Berserk, we see this time and time again, in the form of acceptance of simple, direct happiness, rather than facing what was cruel, miserable, and downright evil and frightening. And we see this in almost all of the arcs of the manga where there are always characters that blatantly throw away the opportunities to delve into certain uncomfortable, morally skewed events just to maintain their sanity, safety, comfort, and stability. And a great example can be seen in the character of Farnese and her relationship with her religion. Now, Farnese, or Farnese, is someone that has experienced this form of happiness and has attributed her own inner motives and dark desires to the concept of religious evil and using her devotion to her religion as an excuse to not find the root of her issues and resolve them. She is willing to live in a blanket of false holiness and elitism. And we see this fall apart as the manga progresses where her inner turmoil, evil tendencies and desires start to take over this coping mechanism and eventually almost destroys her entire self. And I think I'll make a separate video diving deeper into her character. And even Guts himself seems to have a tendency to do this as well. I, so I sorely misinterpreted this initially and only upon revisiting the manga did I realize that Guts may not have ever been quote unquote happy per se, but he did latch on certain elements of comfort and stability that made him disregard crucial moments and events that may have been able to help him prevent certain more dangerous events from ever occurring. And we see this in a few parts of the manga. One of the parts is when we analyze his experience when he was part of the band of the Falcon. Though he was initially extremely reluctant to give in to having comrades being touched and having an open dialogue with other people, he did eventually develop trust and confidence with people in this band of people, almost to the point of calling them a pseudo family. And this was when we see a noticeable shift in Guts' character, even though it was in a very slight manner. He became relatively complacent and ignorant to the deep political environments around him, 
and even allowed himself to become manipulated to do deeds that he would have otherwise not done so if he was using his own critical thought. And a good example of this was the assassination of Count Julius, which led to devastating collateral damages in the form of an innocent child. Now, upon reviewing this section of the manga, it becomes blaringly clear that Guts acted more like a tool of Griffiths instead of someone that was autonomous and individually driven. And this was due to his lack of awareness, lack of awareness of his situation and his self due to his ignorance. He had started to attach himself to his comfort zone of being a commander soldier in order to experience solace and peace within the band. And it has derailed him from his moral standpoint. And this is something that I found extremely overlooked. We see through this specific ordeal that Guts only really realizes his downfall when he realizes that he had accidentally stabbed a child and we see that his face has become destroyed by his own personal actions. And this was also when we start to see the beginnings of Griffiths' selfish desire for power and his dream. And in retrospect, we all experience this in our own lives as well, which is what I mean by the downfall of ignorant bliss. Like many characters in a manga, mainly ones that are in the background, most of them live in peace and harmony due to their active reluctance to explore outside of their comfort zones. But when trouble hits their villages, their safety nets and their lives, they can do absolutely nothing but regret their inaction and flee from danger without any form of prepared will to fight and defense. And I think that this is something that is very quite overlooked. As individuals, I believe that we can learn from this. We can learn to adjust and create a life that allows us to not only feel and experience peace, but only finding that through pushing our boundaries of comfort, even if it means not being eternally blissful in ignorance and safety. <laughs>